Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, appreciate you being on today's video. Just a quick reminder, if you do not want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future, please click on the little bell by the subscribe button. Today we are talking about the CV90 family of vehicles and many of you should probably know this by now, this is my favourite uh, armoured fighting vehicle of the infantry fighting world out there. And not just the infantry fighting world, as you can see these vehicles are also capable of being somewhat of a tank destroyer with the 120mm gun on there too. The range and versatility of the CV-90 is second to none. It's unmatched, it's unrivaled I would say. They are the most successful infantry fighting vehicle of the world of today. And you can argue with me all day long on that, I will take every hit you wish. But the CV-90 is my favourite vehicle out there today, and I truly do feel that it is the greatest infantry fighting vehicle of the world of today, just due to the fact of its versatility, its range of capabilities, its effectiveness on the battlefield, and the number of things that it can do with a very easy to work with price tag. Um, now they're obviously not cheap, they're obviously not something you can just buy at the dollar store, but the fact is that when you get invested into the CV90 family of vehicles and the programs themselves, you're setting yourself up for the next generation and the next generation and the next generation of CV90 because it's not too difficult to upgrade these vehicles. The way in which they're developed allows you to bring it to the next level of, I guess, combat capability than it would be to just buy an entire new program, which is why it is so successful. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank my sponsor for today, Armored Warfare. If you know of the CV90-120 Ghost vehicle, which uh, is a technology demonstrated with the camouflage side, you'll know that it's a pretty cool vehicle, and surprisingly, you can actually play it in the game. Experience one of the hottest tank games on the market with Armored Warfare, a free-to-play MMO. Master hundreds of unique vehicles and join legions of other players in a story-driven PvE, or challenge them in PvP combat. Register now to receive a rare T64 AV Hunter Premium MBT and 7 days of premium time to boost your Merc career start. Are you already an experienced tank commander? Well, use this bonus code to claim a unique temporary CV90 Ghost Vehicle and bonus premium time. Have fun on the game guys, hope you enjoy. So back to the CV90. Now, many of you know that I did serve on the Warrior platform. I do love the Warrior, but it is time for the Warrior to step aside. In terms of comparison to the CV90, it, it bears no comparison at all, unfortunately. The programs are just completely different. And recently, the CV90 Mark IV has been released. It is legitimately the most incredible IFV. When I study it, research it, and look into it, its capabilities compared to other platforms out there are very, very good. And the reason for why they're very good is because this is the key word of this entire video. Proven. Proven. The vehicle has proved that the technology it has, the platform it utilizes, the equipment it works with, works. The troops that have used it, the countries that have used it, know it works. It has served almost flawlessly with those countries in war zones, not just, you know, dotting around in the countryside. It has served in Afghanistan. It has done its time in conflicts uh, and is still being utilized today across the spectrum of countries in Europe to very, very high effect. And I just wish people would start looking at this platform and giving it more respect than it deserves. But because, of course, the fancy links and the beautiful Ajax and all these new high-strung, high-tech vehicles that are still somewhat in development phases are getting all the shot, you know, the spotlight and the, and the showcase. And of course, that's how it's going to be. They're the new big contenders. But for me, I like tried and true. I like something that works. And when the CV90 Mark IV came out, it really just give me a whole plethora of more respect for this company and for this platform because 
they're capitalizing on technology that's worked and a platform that's worked and just refining it, cleaning it up, making it better, bringing it to the forefront of specific infantry fighting vehicle expertise. And they know exactly what they're talking about. And today, we're going to go over the video from BAE Systems, giving a bit of a breakdown from the director, and I really enjoy it. So let's take a look. It has been three years since we introduced the CU-90 Mark IV. Many new upgrades had been accomplished compared to the CU-90 Mark III, and the market was ready for a new CV-90. The CV-90 Mark IV. So first of all, let's talk about customer focus. Okay, this is Dan Lindell, the Director of Combat Vehicles for uh, BA Systems Haglunds Unslavik. Uh, I hope I'm saying that correctly. And uh, he seems like a very personable guy, right? First of all, the Director of Combat Vehicles is getting on this video talking specifically about the vehicle. You're not getting it from some third-party analyst that's at some defense show, uh, you know, with his suit and little, you know, ID badge on in front of all these fancy people in business suits at some defense expo. No, this video is from the director. He is actually going to put his name on the line and his name forefront to this vehicle. To me, that speaks bounds to uh, a respect for him actually, you know, holding his own and saying, I believe in this product. So to me, that's a big deal. He's the leader and the management of a program. To me, that speaks values too. Secondly, Dan, if you're watching this, dude, please get me out into <laughs> into one of these vehicles one day. Please, I want to play around with it. If you want to invite me over to come play around, I'll do dedicated videos. I'll do anything for you, man. Please just let me get on the CV90, please. Uh, There's a little desperation there. I'm sorry I control myself. Uh, but seriously, though, it, it does show leaps and bounds to other defense procurement projects that are out there in the world, especially for infantry fighting vehicles. You do. You don't see directors of programs, you know, just in, they're not in a business a suit they're actually getting inside vehicle he's in the crew commander's spot he's in the driver's spot he's actually climbing on this vehicle talking about it and relating to it as if he is the director he's the one who's getting this program successful and it is successful so dan massive respect um with you doing this it just kind of speaks values to me for when it comes to you know actually trying to get your product to uh be sold i guess draws on its legacy and knowledge accumulated by its seven use of nations seven user nations that means seven governments seven defense ministers or defense parties seven different groups of procurement testing evaluation financials have decided to choose this vehicle seven and these countries aren't stupid okay they know what they're looking for they've specifically analyzed a platform that works for them and i i honestly think that when they've procured and selected this vehicle They've gone upon the basis of what has worked and what's tried and tested, what's tried and true. Do we want to spend a huge amount of money on a vehicle that's not even produced yet? They're still in the development phase. Yes, it looks great on paper. Or do we want to use something and buy something that has gone through generation of generation of upgrades and challenges and whatever has happened with it, you know, even problems, and select the one that best fits the needs that we want? Because that's the great thing with CV90s. You can pick... The platform that works best for you. Do you want a 40 millimeter? Great, we'll give you a 40 millimeter. Do you want a 30 millimeter? Great, we'll give you a 30 millimeter. Do you want additional crew space? Sure, we'll give you the the infantry fighting vehicle that doesn't have the uh, the heavier gun on top. It's just the carrier. The countries know what they want, and it's being utilized for a long time and is very successful. So I know maybe I'm a little biased going into this video and and really sort of selling it beyond the realm of what it should be. But look, the proof's in the pudding here, guys. Look at that list. This ensures that the CV-90 system is not modern only today, but as long as the fleets keep accumulating data and adopt. This by utilizing the potential for growth to increase the performance in mobility, survivability, and firepower. Now, if there's one thing I know about market feedback analysis and quality control, because I do quite a bit of it in my normal career, is data. Having as much data or data as you can to gather resources to prepare business cases to prepare uh, solutions to solve problems it's all available and with the modern electronic suites that are on infantry fighting vehicles like the cv90 that information is constant they're tracking heat temperatures in, in the exhausts or in the transmissions they're gathering suspension bandwidths they're suspending uh data from the turret to communicate with the hull and are they communicating together via radios the list is endless okay and this data helps so much when it comes to as dan said expanding and improving upon the programs 
over and over upon each generation and the family of vehicles. Because the more countries that provide data and information and even just solid feedback, the better the vehicle will be, which is again why, remember what I said about reliability to uh, proven vehicles. This is a proven vehicle because information is so widely and readily available from the countries that are utilizing it to improve, constantly improve with that proven design. Uh, it's literally like, literally a sculpting an ice sculpture, okay? You, you, you get it rough, it looks pretty good, it works, and then you're, you know, you're chiseling off the little edges, you're sanding off the little edges to make it a refined, clean sculpture. And that's, to me, what I think the CV90 has turned into. A beautiful ice sculpture of uh, combat capability. CV90 is not only modern, it is relevant, which is even more important. From the nuclear threats of the Cold War era, CV90 draws a direct line to the more eminent threat of the thermobaric warheads. The design philosophy of the CV90 with the minimal hull principle still applies. Every engagement starts with the detection of the target. If it's hard to detect, it is hard to defeat. So design efficiency is the most important aspect, since it is the ratio between actual usable payload and total weight of the vehicle system. So a 30% increase in the projected side area will not only render a more heavy vehicle, but it will also result in a 50% increase in the detectable area above natural mark. So as you can see, profile of the vehicle is quite focused upon in this video the detectable areas they call it so a 30 percent increase in the projected side area you can see they're taking a little bit of a dig at the uh, links there you can see the profile of the links in the background a little bit heavier of course the links and uh, when you get heavier you make more complications whether it be you know uh, capability to drive longer distances due to fuel amounts uh, weight limits across bridges etc so a heavier vehicle does make things better but also more difficult heavier does sometimes mean more armored but the detectable area in this case is fairly significant okay look at the profile of cv90 versus the higher profile vehicles out there it's it's significant uh detectable area in terms of having a low profile against a hillside or in a hold down position it's pretty significant uh, and cv90 is nice and i would say smooth and low uh, and a lot of people would disagree with this and say the Futurist doesn't have to be smooth and low. We're not going against, you know, uh, main battle tanks of today. We're going against more sort of anti-tank guided missiles, things like that, that we need the extra armor protection because we're not going to be able to be stuck in a hold down position all the time like we would back in the Cold War. Uh, but I would disagree. I really do feel that a low profile vehicle like this presents less of a target, uh, especially when the infantry fighting variant uh, without the turret actually just having the crew uh, driving the infantry around with no turret at all, it's even lower. So, you know, having a low profile vehicle makes it a lot less easy to find and see, uh, whether it be thermal signature, just visual signature, or even sound signature, because bigger vehicles are normally more clunky as they bounce all over the place. The CV90 has the lowest visible signature of all modern IFBs. The substantial effort in designing the CV90 with the lowest possible signatures in the visual, infrared, radar and audible ranges has not been easy. But we are proud to deliver an IFV that is very hard to detect by human senses or advanced sensors. In the last decades, we have seen a tremendous effort in mobilizing coalition forces to support allies establishing and preserving peace long outside our own territory. In present times, we focus on our own territory, our neighboring countries, and our region of the continent. So what I also really like about this video is its honesty. Okay, they knew that when they designed this vehicle, it was for a personal use defense almost. It was something that they wanted in the Nordic nations of Sweden, of course, to defend their nation. And, you know, during the Cold War in 1983, the Swedish army required vehicles with high mobility, air defense and anti-tank capability with high survivability and protection. And the Stridsvård 90 project was formed by representatives from the Swedish Armed Forces. Uh, and the Swedish industry, including Haglunds and Bofors, which in 1985 finalized the design for the Unity vehicle that originated from an Air Force concept, actually. 
But the point they're trying to make here is that this vehicle, although designed for homeland defense and designed for specific purposes of the Nordic nations, specifically Sweden, it has the capacity and capability to expand everywhere. Now, the vehicle was primarily trialed for winter conditions or winter uh, capabilities. It was really specific what it needed to work in a subarctic climate. Uh, it had very good mobility in snow, wetlands, while carrying, supporting up to eight and maybe even six fully equipped and dismounted soldiers. So there are a lot of other variations of the vehicle too, which specifically work well for the Nordic nations. But they're being very clear about that. They're saying, look, we did design this vehicle for the Nordic nations, home defense, specific nations requirements. But during its development cycle and phases, we've expanded the use of this vehicle outside the realms of just standard Nordic nations. And the survivability and the electronic architecture have provided huge amounts of better protection, uh, interconnection with different nations and militaries. And I truly do feel that they're pushing the boundary and the envelope of expanding a program that could really go even further than uh, just an infantry fighting vehicle with things like the 120 millimeter gun now that they have on the CV-9120. So really, really cool that they're just being straight up forward and saying, you know what, yeah, this was specific, but now things have changed. There is still, of course, a need to transport equipment, perhaps not by plane or ships, but by truck or trains. Mobility has two fundamentally different parts, tactical and strategic mobility. CV90 excels in both. To design for strategic mobility, you have to be very precise and thorough in your design, and thereby fit into very important envelopes. For instance, envelopes for train transport. Other contemporary IFVs do not fit. Now, one thing I will add here is that not all nations will have the same standard of uh, putting vehicles onto trains. You know, in Canada, I'm sure there's different requirements in the United States, etc. When it comes to NATO standards, uh, there is obviously specific requirements. You can see there's a Czech national standard here for uh, mobility on trains. But the future is moving armored fighting battle groups on trains. It always has been, actually. It's not the future. But the future of being able to move them effectively on trains is very challenging. Because once you start making these huge vehicles that have this large scale profile, it can be a difficult challenge to get them through tunnels. Uh, Europe has a lot of mountains <laughs> and if you have to transport them through certain areas, uh, it can be quite hard to actually put them into the profile of a uh, tunnel or something else that may be clipping on the side of the uh, other train that's going by. So it's something to take into consideration. I find it really interesting when we look at other platforms that are sort of showcased and shared that they always go for the uh, tactical mobility, right? It can go cross country and go all over the place, great. But can this thing be carried by a plane easily? Can it be put on trains in mass quantities without overloading train carriages or needing six or seven engines to pull them all? Can it fit through tunnels on trains? Can this thing be put into a war zone quickly from the other side of a country or the other side of a continent without a huge administrative and logistical burden to the military force that's trying to use it? And CV-90, once again, has proven that it doesn't have that restriction. It can move and be placed upon the rail flats or onto air aircraft or whatever else very quickly without any hindrance and will significantly decrease your freedom of movement and increase time for larger troop maneuvers. CV-90 has always been the benchmark for mobility in armor fighting vehicle segment. No other OEM has put the same amount of effort to explore the limits of what's possible to achieve with a tracked vehicle. The basic mobility of a tracked vehicle is to surpass that of a wheeled vehicle. Stellar mobility is, in our opinion, to be a class leading in all aspects of mobility. Endurance, self-sustainability, agility. I love the fact that he said agility, but whatever. Um, look at this picture right now. I don't know if you recently watched my video on the struggling Ajax program, the British Army's variant of the uh, reconnaissance armoured fighting vehicle, but they were struggling to navigate in reverse a 20 centimeter obstacle, which has now, on, you know, been adapted and modified. But this thing, look at the picture of what it's navigating through here. It's a huge obstacle. And when you talk about a tactical mobility like that, I know the reality is you're probably not going to be reversing a vehicle up a, an embankment like this. But it's just something to consider that the design of this vehicle really has been refined to no other extent that I can see out there today. Obstacle negotiation, cross-country speed, soft soil mobility, and strategic mobility. Mobility is the number one enabler for all other capabilities.
The digitalization of the CV-19 started with the introduction of the CV-19 Mark II. At this time, the digitalization consisted of several components that was focused on built-in maintainability, built-in fault localization, and this was to ease the training and maintainability of the platform. Something else you don't hear much about when it comes to platforms being procured or weapon systems being put into place is training and development. So making sure that you have the capability to refine a program and make sure that those who are trained upon it have all the resources they need. And I can safely say that Sweden uh, have some of the mo most robust training programs out there. I've talked to many crew members of CV-90s uh, and of the Nordic nations training on CV-90s and it's second to none. Steelbeast Pro, uh, the video game that I used to play, I guess not really a video game, the simulation software I used to play, relies quite heavily upon CV-90s actually uh, as a technology demonstrator software and it works really well. And you can see that if countries are willing to invest in something like that, specific training cycles and programs, packages, software for things like this, it's going to make the vehicle more successful, more so than the platform, than it will be with the crew who's in it. You can have the greatest vehicle in the world. If you don't have an infrastructure of training, support, logistics, maintenance that follows this program to the bitter end, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. The irony when it comes to procurement of defense contracts is that we talk about the equipment being actually processed to be bought, but we don't talk hugely about the infrastructure and the training that's required for the troops that are going to use it. Not just the soldiers that are going to be driving it, shooting it, commanding it, but those who are operating at the back of it. You know, there is specific training that comes with these kind of vehicles that is costly and takes a huge administrative burden to a military that's trying to get a force ready to go, whether it be an infantry battle group, an armored battle group, a mechanized battle group, to use this equipment, it takes time and resources. And CV-90 has the expertise of generations of CV-90 since the 1990s to prepare crews and, and commanders, gunners, drivers, whatever else it may be, to use this vehicle very, very effectively with all that data, all that you know user information that can just be transitioned into a new military, which is why if any outside military wants to use this equipment that's not from the Nordic nations or the ones that are already using it, there's a package ready to go. It's all signed, sealed, and ready to go that has worked and has been effective in the past. Some of these newer programs walking into the unknown, and that's going to be a given. That happens, right? You buy something new, we all have to slowly go through the training process and cycle and everyone's got to get used to it including the developer but not with this okay there is so much detailed information about this program and the vehicle itself that they can just be capitalized on straight away crews can jump in and off they go the big step of introducing a full digital platform was done in the cv-19 mark III. that opened up for a completely new level of functional development of the platform with adding the next generation sensor suites, network connectivity, and onboard health usage monitoring system without making major design iterations. The electronic architecture significantly improves the operation capabilities of the CV90. This lies at the heart of our digitalization. Traditionally, the system will be based on CPUs but with that, it is challenging to keep a pace with the growing amount of data streams and processing requirements to manage the data. In response, into the latest build standard, we are utilizing the specialized parallel computing speed and performance of the graphical processing unit, GPUs. That's right, folks. You heard it here first. The CV90 Mark IV has a new GTX 3090 inside of it. Um, but yeah, that this is the future, right? Having to utilize GPUs to provide information, graphical information, because that's the generation of soldiers we're getting into today. They're more intuitive to seeing things digitally than they are in more of an analog or just visual capability. And I know that sounds weird, but it's true. Uh, we rely upon our cell phones for just about every bit of information we want to get within our days. Why are we not doing the same in our vehicles? And that's what they're pushing for. I know this sounds ridiculous, maybe a bit of a cringe statement, but they want to turn the CV90's electronic architecture into somewhat of a smartphone, right? Have information digitally available and looking you know aesthetically pleasing to the human eye when wanting to specifically look for certain information it's there graphically interfaced to the crew of the vehicle which i find is very very good uh, and i think all modern platforms are trying to do but i think cv90 has really refined and used that data that they need to make it work very intuitively to the crew that want to use it in addition to cpus enabling us to bring exceptional power and performance into our cv90 
for the crew operating the CV-90, this means optimal situation awareness and combat capability. Full data exchange between all types of platforms involved in an operation. Highly effective hums and built-in training with augmented reality. With trillions of floating operations per second, it creates a base for artificial intelligence and machine learning. The complexity becomes manageable and demanding or dull tasks easy to achieve. So the CV-90 Mark IV configuration had at that time been very focused on base capabilities and core systems. So what has happened the last three years? Well, BA System Heglens has recently secured two large and important programs. Not only important for us, but of course mainly for the users, but also for local partners and future customers. We're in the final integration phase and have already completed system tests of active protection and anti-tank guided missiles. So just so you know, the missile in that footage that they're trialing is the Spike anti-tank guided missile. If I would say so myself, one of the greatest anti-tank platforms out there for missile capability. Uh, the truly fire and forget missile or a specifically accurate guide in missile from top down attack. Very, very good at what it does. So you can see that they're picking equipment that is very valid for the future. They're not selecting something that's already out there. They're trying to add upon technologies to something that's worked with some new stuff that is being trialed in the same instance and has had good success active protection systems you can see that they're also investing into that too but they didn't base their design all the way around it they're expanding upon a very truly tested design and adding stuff on as they go instead of trying to demand a requirement from a design of themselves and saying yeah let's put active protection systems in the highest forefront of our priorities which well, not it's not that they're actually trying to slowly divide each segment of you know requirements or principles for the vehicle into priority and it looks like you know survivability is very high there so i'm curious as to see how active protection systems will come out for this vehicle in the future um, i'm sure we'll probably see maybe trophy you know maybe it, it won't be cheap it won't be cheap and it will not be uh you know nasty stuff it'll be high-tech stuff I can guarantee you anything they put in the CV-90 is not going to be, you know, the lowest contender. They're going to do a ton of research to make sure that whatever they put on there is of the highest of quality. Now we will provide you with a glimpse of what to expect of the CV-90 Mark IV in the coming years. A networked, warfighting machine built upon combat experience and cutting-edge technology. So, the CV-90 Mark IV is a new IFE generation that can take more weight without being any heavier in its base. It's an IFV with the most effective lethality pack yet. It has survivability levels that sets a new benchmark, with a renowned mobility that is taking yet another step. A sensor suite providing situation awareness with massive amount of real-time data handled by the cyber-hardened fourth generation electronic architecture conducting semi-autonomous decision support eye fighting this in a package even more compact in size than its predecessor still providing even better ergonomics design efficiency so faster more lethal better protected with tons of growth the cv90 mark IV. So, now you've seen some of the features that the C-90 Mark IV will bring to tomorrow's battlefield. Until the next time, keep your distance and stay safe. Now I could talk and talk and talk and talk about how much I love this vehicle and how I truly do feel it is today one of the greatest infantry fighting vehicles if not the greatest infantry fighting vehicle out there today potentially also one of the greatest supporting vehicle to main battle tanks with the cv90 120 uh it's just incredible folks uh, the, the the proof's in the pudding there's no there's no bs i can't i can't bullshit my way out of this one okay you just have to research it you just have to look at the data and the information uh and the feedback from people who've used this vehicle okay that's the real proof in the pudding is those who have used this vehicle have no nothing but good to say about it i've never spoke to an operator commander driver gunner i know quite a people have a lot of people have operated these vehicles that have said anything bad about it 
And if they have, there's always a solution in place for it, or it's a it's a gripe or grime than any other tracked infantry fighting vehicle would have out there. There's no way around some of the concerns that they would have. But for me, I truly do feel that CV90 should be in the arsenal of many militaries around the world. I'm not going to specifically say which ones. I think you can also guess which ones I'm probably going to be mentioning that they should be a part of. I think that the infantry fighting vehicle fleet around the world right now is in disarray. Uh, it's a hodgepodge of random contracts and defense procurement that's just gone out to lunch. It's crazy. And I think CV90 is cool calm and collected in the defense world for a program that will just work it will just do what it's designed to do and more and if you want to expand upon it it will do more than that so i think you can also take a huge guess as to the militaries i really want the vehicles to be applied for whether it be the infantry fighting vehicle the uh, troop carrier whatever else, else it may be you know what i'm saying here folks i don't think i have to say much more to sell this to you maybe you disagree with me and i wholeheartedly don't uh, disrespect you for that but i th truly do feel cb90 is one of the greatest infantry fighting vehicles in the world i hope you enjoyed today's video folks please please leave me your comments in the comment section below i'd love to hear your opinion on this vehicle and what you think about it because i think it's important to to listen to people's opinions on military equipment like this because it's so diverse in the way it could be used in militaries for the future especially with now the mark IV coming out i'm really curious as to see what will happen um Thank you so much for joining me. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future, please click the little bell by the subscribe button. Uh, also, go check out the description box below for that Armored Warfare link and information. And also, uh, please also go check out my uh, Patreon and my PayPal if you want to support my channel financially. I could really, really appreciate every single one of you who's been doing that for me. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.